Hello, my 3D printer peeps. Hello, members and Patreons. Hello, new owners of the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. We are going to walk you through getting her out of the box, assembled, set up, and ready for printing. We're going to get started right now. Underneath this box is all kinds of sensitive stuff. Please don't use a razor blade or anything that might damage the materials underneath this cardboard. Use something a little less sharp and use it to break that tape seal. Inside the box, you'll see something like this. Free up both sides of the plastic bag. With both tabs free, flip the box upside down. Your printer is now upside down. Place one hand here, one hand underneath, and flip it over. With the printer right side up, free it from the bag. There is some foam and cardboard you can immediately remove. However, be very careful. Hidden inside, that foam and cardboard is this little box. This little box has a small toolkit inside. Continue to remove the foam and cardboard. Unlike more complicated printers, the removal of this foam and cardboard is really easy. It practically separates itself. Please take note in this piece right here, you will need to remove this part. This is your purge wiper. Very important. With all of the obvious loose cardboard and foam removed, you may grab the printer right here, avoid touching this metal rail on the front, pick it up, remove any loose pieces, and discard the plastic bag. Wedged underneath additional foam and the print bed is this quick start guide. You can slide it out. You won't be needing this because you've got me. Just kidding, just kidding. Bamboo has begun including some really cool stickers with their quick start guides. You're gonna want those. Then you can get rid of the manual. This is a desiccant pack. You can dispose of that. This little pack has some paperwork you don't really need. This bag has important stuff. Open it up and retrieve the Allen keys. Using the longer of the two Allen key, remove this screw and this screw. Look to the side of the printer. Remove this plastic baggie. Remove this piece of foam. And remove this screw and this screw. With both these screws removed, this piece will easily come off. Remove and discard it. In an unusual departure for a 3D printer, this machine does not come with a pair of snippers. Grab your own pair of snippers and gently remove this zip tie. Place two fingers here on the tool head and gently pull it forward. Remove this piece of foam. Here under the build plate, you'll spot two more pieces of foam. Grab this piece of foam and work it forward. Gently pinch the build plate and slide it forward. And work out that remaining piece of foam. Your print bed is now free. Under the heat bed, there are three screws to tighten. The first one is right here. The second one is right here. And the third one is in the back 
underneath the rubber scrubber right here. Take note of this slot right here. Take this part and slide it. into that slot. Locate this bag. It says M3-12. Underneath that same spot, locate this hole and put that screw in the hole. Locate this little baggie that says M3-8 and remove both screws. Install this part right here. You will find these screws are somewhat snug. You may want to reverse the Allen key like this to get a little extra torque on them. It is very important that this piece is super secure. With that piece firmly in place, slide the filament holder down over the notch. Your machine came with one PTFE tube. Insert one end of that tube here into this PTFE coupler. Push it down one time. This coupler has teeth that will engage. Do not pull test this connection. Should you need to remove this tube, it is critical that you depress this ring before applying any upward motion. Avoid removing this tube unless necessary. Connect the next section of tube to any of the four holes right here. I'm going to go with the closest corner. Slide it in, press it down firmly one time. This organizer has one smaller slot. Insert this black harness into that smaller slot. With that tube in the smaller slot, Insert the PTFE tube in any of the other slots. Here is the A1 Mini camera. Your camera may have this little piece of plastic on it. This little cover swings in front of the camera. It can also be swung backward over the camera's light. Some people claim this works as a light diffuser. Other sources claim the light can get warm and warp this cover. My cover fell off. I will let you decide if you want to keep this cover on or simply discard it. I am going to discard mine. Grab a cheap Dollar Tree toolbox or the one linked in my description, write A1 Mini on the top, and dump all of your tools and accessories in it. Keep this with your printer. Turn your printer on. You will need to download Bamboo Handy from your phone's app store. With Handy installed, create a Bamboo account. You will use this account to log in to Bamboo Handy and Bamboo Studio on your computer. Please download Bamboo Studio, install that, and log into that on your computer as well. With both of these things installed and your account logged in, Press Start. Choose your language. Choose your region. Set up your Wi-Fi. Once connected, it will present you with a QR code. On your app, go to Devices, press Plus, and point your camera at the QR code. Check this box, press confirm to bind. Your A1 Mini is now bound to your Bamboo account. Your screen will continue to the calibration screen. On your phone, name this printer. I will name mine Parvati. Press confirm. You are now connected to your A1 Mini. If you press this button, you should see the camera from your printer.
you may go ahead and close the app. Here on the screen, you will see the printer wants to run calibrations. Press start. Your A1 Mini will go through a calibration process that will consist of a bunch of scary movements and weird noises. All of this is normal. Leave it alone till it is done. You may touch the screen and press go. It is now time to do the lubrication. Your Bamboo Lab A1 came with these two sample products. One is oil, one is grease. You may use these. However, I suggest picking up one of these and one of these and keeping them with your toolkit. I will leave a link in the description. I will also be using a plastic dropper to apply the oil. I will simply insert it into the nozzle of the oil bottle and suck some oil out to apply to the printer using the dropper. It may also be helpful to grab a cheap little Dollar Tree paintbrush. If you don't feel like doing this now, you can press later and probably be okay. If you want to be sure you're doing everything in the best interest of your printer, we will do this now. Go ahead and press done. Move your hot end all the way over and move your print bed all the way back. Using the oiling method of your choice, place a small bead of oil on this rail. On both sides. Move the print bed up and do this on the remaining portion of the rail. Again, do this on both sides. Pinch your build plate and physically move the bed forward and backward. Using a Scott's Blue Shop Cloth, clean the top surface of your guide rail. This surface does not need oil on it. Place a small drop of oil here on both sides and let it run down. If it doesn't run down, help it by applying a little bit more in the middle. Next, look in here. This is your lead screw. The Bamboo Wiki instructs you to apply oil on this lead screw. We will not be we will be applying grease on this lead screw. Using a small tool, apply a small amount of grease every few inches. We are not overly stressing about this because the movement of the printer is going to help distribute the oil and the grease. Here, next to the tool head, you will see a little slot in this rail. Put a small touch of oil in that slot and gently move your hot end back and forth. Please avoid slamming it into this nub or into this poop chute. When doing this, it might be good practice to place a blue shop cloth over the print bed. Do not remove the magnetic print bed because I would rather you do something to this print surface than the magnetic plate beneath it. Bamboo also instructs us to lubricate the bottom rail. I am going to suggest leaning it on its side and letting a touch of oil run down this rail. Manually bring the tool head up and back down. You have survived your A1 lubricating process. While there are more technical components that are possible to lubricate, this is the most common lubricating procedure. You may back out 
to the main menu. Keep an eye on your screen. You are most definitely going to see this message. Your A1 Mini will need a firmware update. It is best practice to run a complete calibration after a firmware update. If you just finished setting this printer up, you already sat through a calibration and we will be sitting through another one. Go ahead and press update. Press update. Your A1 Mini will download and install the latest firmware all by itself. When you see this message, press back, press back again, press back again, and you are now at the home screen. It is a great idea to run a full calibration. To do this, press settings, press the down arrow, press maintenance, press calibration, and press start. When the calibration is done, return to the home screen and we will manually move the printer to spread our grease. Using the screen, touch control, touch XYZ, touch Z down, when prompted, touch home. Once the home is complete, press the up arrow on the screen to ride that lead screw all the way to the top spreading that newly applied grease. Once at the top, you'll notice a light film across the entirety of the lead screw. If you feel there are some bare areas, you can take advantage of this moment to apply a touch more grease. However, only a very little is needed and you are likely good to go. Go ahead and hold down to ride that lead screw all the way down, spreading that grease a little bit more. Your printer came with a sample piece of filament included. Promptly locate the nearest receptacle and dispose of that sample piece of filament. Grab a real spool of bamboo filament and we will use this to test the printer. When loading filament, it's typical to go beards, not mullets. However, for the A1 Mini, we will go mullets. What that means is we will slide the filament over this holder with the filament coming underneath the spool rather than over top. Insert that filament underneath this coupler and feed it upwards until it stops. We will pop over to Bamboo Studio to set up the A1 Mini. Here in Bamboo Studio, we will enter the prepare screen. You will need to add your A1 printer to your collection in Bamboo Studio. To do that, underneath printer, click on this pull down, scroll to the bottom, and choose Select Remove Printers. On the following pop-up, look for the A1 Mini and check the box. Press Confirm. Your A1 Mini will immediately be selected. If you have multiple printers, you will need to find it in the pull-down and click to activate it. Here in the Device tab, make sure the name of your Bamboo A1 is chosen. Mine was called Parvati. Click on that. Return to the prepare screen and you are now ready to slice for your Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Congratulations, your A1 Mini is ready for use. I'm Mr. Greg and you're on 3D Rundown.